Hello and a warm welcome to this half hour special from Aero India 2019. Over the last few days, top aircraft manufacturers from across the world have lined up at the El Hanka Air Force Base in Bengaluru to display their wares. But let's start with the two biggest names in aviation, Boeing and Airbus, both of whom set the tone for the summit by announcing massive plans in the commercial space. I caught up with Dinesh Keskar of Boeing and Anand Stanley of Airbus to get the lowdown on these plans. We think uh, we have already sold over 225 Maxes to Jet Airways, about 155 Maxes to SpiceJet with additional options, and then recently six uh, 787 Dreamliners to Vistara with four purchase rights. What that means is we have a lot of order book and we are kind of booked solid for the next four or five years. And many of these airplanes are going to come this year. I think we will expect to deliver about 20 to 25 maxes. Next year, this time, we will have the first Vistara airplane come in. And as you know, Air India is already operating 27 of the Dreamliners that are behind here. So we are absolutely delighted with the Indian market. As far as the Boeing 737 uh, next gen is concerned, there was, of course, you put it on hold with regard to delivering it to Jet Airways. Is that still on hold at the moment? Give us a status update of where so things stand. Let me clarify that. Good question. As far as Boeing is concerned, we are delivering those airplanes. They are built in Jet Airways livery. They are very much done and parked. The airplanes, when Jet Airways purchased them, they did something called sale lease back which means they took those airplanes, and that's the traditional and the only way most airlines in India take the airplanes. So they have done the sale lease back, and because of their current situation, it's the lessor, and the Jet Airways is having discussion when those airplanes will be actually handed over to them. We have handed it over already to the lessors, so as far as we are concerned, we are fulfilling our agreement with the leasing companies, with the airlines in India, without any delay. Airbus, of course, recently announced that it is stopping the Air 380. Much of disappointment to several aviation enthusiasts, might I add. But what does this mean in terms of opportunities for you with regard to the 777X? Are you looking at capitalizing on this uh, open market and opportunity that comes up? Well, you know, it's an interesting question. But let me tell you, if you look at the last three years sales record, it was very obvious the airplane wasn't doing well. So it's not like there is an opportunity, OK? Everybody knew that that airplane is an engineering marvel, but not really a money maker. I mean, a lot of good airlines have bought that airplane, but if you look at the same airlines, they have all gone ahead and bought the 777X. The Pratt & Whitney gear turbofan engine is a brand new designed engine, and I'm really pleased to tell you that we've made significant progress on this. The reliability rate right now of the aircraft with those engines in India have touched 99.6%, which is phenomenal. So that is today. We've reached that number today. Another point I want to tell you about is that in the last 12 months, we've worked very, very closely with the engine manufacturer, with the regulatory authorities, with the airlines, and multiple, multiple other partners. In the last 12 months, we have reduced the issues because of our issue resolution by 4x by 4x. That is the amount of issue reduction we've seen. Right now, we have retrofit most of the engines of the Neo fleet if there were any issues. 95% of the aircraft have been retrofit, and in the next two months, we will reach 100%. I've heard that from Pratt & Whitney. Right days ahead, no doubt, but tell me a little bit, what is the plan really to boost and enhance your partnership with Indigo with regard to the wide body aircraft? Indigo has, of course, plans to induct a wide range of these aircraft into the fleet. So wide body wise, what's the plan like as far as Indigo is concerned? Sure, so let me tell you, we're very humbled and honored that Indigo were, has been working with Airbus all these years and we have a very strong backlog with Indigo right now. In terms of their plans, we are working with them just on the planning uh, process. So far, most of our conversations have been around the single aisle, which is what we have been doing. We have sold a number of single aisles, which is the A320s and the A321s. Now, Indigo is in the process of planning their international routes, their long distance routes, and we are just in the initial stages of conversation with them. Uh, I am unable to talk about any of their plans because they are in the planning stages right now. As the name suggests, Aero India saw the best of aircraft out here at the Ehlanka Air Force Base in Bengaluru. But there were players in the precision instruments, avionics and armament space as well. Thales, for instance, inked a deal with HAL to supply rocket propelled launchers 
for the helicopter platforms at the PSU. Similarly, BAE Systems also announced that its M777 Howitzer guns would be ready for the armed forces by the end of the year. I caught up with some of these players to find out what they make in India timelines would look like. Everything uh, we have localized in India for uh, the sub, uh, subsets of the Rafale uh, involve uh, the joint venture with Reliance, the joint venture with BEL, but many uh, other partners uh, as well. Uh, you know uh, our overall uh, offset commitment and what I can uh, confirm to you is that uh, we're absolutely uh, in line with the plan. Great. You know, another, uh, another big uh, commitment that you were, of course, taking up, it started a few years ago, of course, is with regard to uh, the upgrade of the Mirage 2000. I'm given to understand that a handover process to HAL has already been completed, but you will play a supportive role even as you complete the handover itself. What kind of a role will you continue to play with regard to the upgradation of the Mirage 2000? Well, uh, first of all, uh, in the concerning the first four aircraft uh, of the program, uh, uh, this was under the complete responsibility of Thales and we uh, took uh, uh, this first phase uh, to transfer the necessary uh, technologies uh, to HAL. Uh, so this has been completed uh, since uh, aircraft number five, HAL has uh, taken complete responsibility. This is moving along uh, very uh, nicely and of course Thales uh, continues to accompany uh, the technology transfer but the most part of it was performed during uh, the, the, the upgrade of the first four uh, aircraft. So we will continue to support as needed. HL is a major partner to Thales. We are constant contact uh, with them and uh, of course uh, they will tell us if uh, they need uh, support in any particular domain. Right. But after the recent accident involving the Mirage 2000, is there a risk of the upgradation process being jinxed by way of the incident itself? Is that a problematic going forward? Well, we always uh, have a look uh, with HL on uh, what they need, uh, but uh, we consider that uh, from an industrial standpoint, technical standpoint, uh, the program is moving according to plan. I need to put two, two things first on the plate, which is uh, the first thing is that this is a deal between uh, the U.S. government and the government of India. We are, uh, we are a supplier to the U.S. government, the third party, and we stand in support of both the governments. So the deal is between the two governments is going very well. Uh, for the for the moment, we have already supplied five guns. As you probably are aware, two of them had participated in the Republic Day Parade also, and a uh, couple of them have fired in Pokhran to carry out uh, the firing and the data collection for the range tables. Apart from these five guns, we are going to be giving a complement of 18 odd more by the end of this year, as per the contractual deliverables. So everything is going fine, and hopefully by the end of the year, we should have the first operationally ready. M777 Indian Regiment on the Indian side. And something very interesting about the Make in India plan vis-a-vis -vis the product itself is that 120 guns are scheduled to be made in India. With this potential to push that number up higher depending on the situation. When will that call be taken and what is it all about? Certainly. So, as you very rightly pointed out, under the present contract, we have the first 25 guns being assembled in UK, assembled, integrated and tested and then brought into India. And then the subsequent guns, beginning with the 26th gun onwards and the 145th gun, would be assembled and tested and fired and everything completed on the Indian soil. Now, this would be completed by about the, the middle of the year 1921. Uh, what transpires after that would depend on the requirement being posed by, the, by, by India. Uh, we are working towards trying to get more and more uh, content on the gun from Indian suppliers. Uh, that would also ensure that the price is contained. But ultimately, the call, the final call with with, live, with the government of India and the numbers would decide as to what is the kind of content that can be manufactured in right. India. Ever since the government of India announced its request for information for the manufacture of 110 fighter jets for the Indian Air Force, two companies have stood out by way of the proposals. Lockheed Martin, for instance, revamped its entire F-16 platform to bring out the F-21, a completely new fighter jet that it says is exclusively for the Indian Air Force. This, while Boeing hopes to create a manufacturing ecosystem surrounding the F-A-18 Super Hornet. Now, I caught up with both these players to weigh in on these plans. Proud moment for Lockheed Martin today to present the F-21 to India. It's a unique fighter for India. And it's a fighter that has, uh, it's a completely different animal, both inside and outside. 
and it is an, a, a fighter that I think will serve India in the 21st century very well, and that's why F-21 for the 21st century. Right. I have to ask you, though, what makes this different from your previous offering in terms of, uh, you know, technicality for the layperson? How is the F-21 different from the F-16, really? It has increased growth capacity, increased lethality, uh, increased affordability. Um, so it's an all-new uh, aircraft. And I think in the Indian context, for Tata being our strategic partner, uh, we look forward to having this unique configuration only for India. But I'm just curious, Mr. Lal, for the longest time, you know, the F-16 was your big offering to the IAF. What changed in terms of you bringing out a whole new product now to substitute what was essentially uh, your baby for the Indian Air Force, the F-16? India is a very, very important market, and uh, India has its unique um, operational requirements, unique capabilities that it needs looking into the 21st century. And so the F-21 is, is uh, designed for that purpose. And there are many unique systems which are competition sensitive, so I will not be able to get into. However, that is the spirit behind unveiling this today. You've spoken to me so much about how India should be proud about joining that F-16 alliance with so many countries owning and you know operating that aircraft. But with a whole new offering now, does that advantage and that exclusivity of joining that club now get a tad diminished considering it's a whole new plane that you're offering? Is that problematic in a sense? No, not at all. In fact, it enhances. What India is getting is a unique platform with unique capabilities that feed on top of everything you just explained. Right. So this is a, a, a game changer and an, a value addition. Right. Okay. So uh, we're very proud of our aircraft, which is the F-18 Super Hornet, um, operated by Air Force and Navies around the world. And you know, the, the United States has invested already, uh, and we're on a contract for the Block 3. So again, uh, that's what's on offer. So the latest, the greatest, the most capable solution uh, of the Block 3 F-18 Super Hornet. And so what does that mean for the customer? What's our advantage? So first of all, you know, obviously for the Indian Navy campaign, you know, we are our, our natural habitat is the carrier deck. So so it's not just what Boeing brings as an aircraft manufacturer, it's the U.S. Navy and the Indian Navy partnership, carrier operations, carrier integration, technology transfers, know-how around that, and really what it means in the global commons in the Indian Ocean region and, and this very important bigger mission that India plays, not just tomorrow but today and yesterday, already for securing uh, you know, peace and prosperity in the whole Indian Ocean region. And so that's the bigger mission we see for clearly Super Hornet there. Now for the Indian Air Force, as we say, you know, it's about a modern fighter, right? So the threats that India has are really encircling it, if you will. And so it's not about a solution for a dogfight in you know, 1985. This isn't Top Gun. This is about beyond visual range. This is about being very hard to see, so stealth characteristics. This is about being affordable, being reliable, being available and fielded. And so as an Air Force platform, really for a more modern requirement, if we look at how they really modernize you know, the post merca and, and technology is always innovating, the threats are always evolving. So you have to be head the curb. And we see the Super Hornet as the most capable aircraft to fulfill both the Navy and the Air Force missions. And of course, um, if, if they're you know, in a make in India, as you heard, a billion dollars of sourcing, 160 direct stars. So we're ready. We're making in India today. So you know, it's not a risk profile for us. We're very confident about how we would do that and do it affordably for the customer. Over the last few months, there's been so much talk over whether the government of India has done enough to support India's defence PSUs. In fact, HAL has spoken of it on several occasions. However, Chairman and MD of Bharat Electronics, MV Gautama, feels that as far as the government's present policy is concerned, the playing field between private and public just got a whole lot more level. The government want today value for money to the end user. That means uh, gone are days when PSUs were getting on projects on nomination and at the price probably dictated by PSUs. So today we have increased our success ratio in winning competitive tenders. So we, we are now on par with any private company and we are ready to compete and make them run to earn their money. Would you agree with that notion that the private sector gets more preferential treatment from the government? Contrary, today I feel government is encouraging competition among all industries be it private or be it public sector. And uh, contrary, the government is not interfering in some of the decisions like the offset partners. So today, 
We are very happy to tell you that in the same Dashu Rafael deal, Bell is an offset partner and we already got orders and we are going to get much more. Level playing field or not, the one aspect that continues to cause some concern for defence manufacturers is the inordinately long timeline when it comes to defence procurements. In fact, the Kalyani Group's FICB project is yet to see its down selection process completed. But Group Chairman Baba Kalyani feels it may not have to be the most painful wait he's endured for a long time now. So FICB-wise, where is the company? I mean, I don't know where it stands because uh, I, I don't make those decisions. Yeah, we have put in our bid uh, along with Tata's uh, yes. and uh, General Dynamics as a consortium. Do you foresee a timeline for its completion? You know, that's a difficult question to answer because it's a big program and I think uh, uh, there is now a clear-cut direction from the government that many of these big programs are going to move right. into strategic partnership uh, uh, mode. Give us an update on where the ATAG stands at the moment. I believe trials are currently underway. Yeah, our trials have been over for the last one and a half years, the trials that we did with DRDO. Now we are going to start, the, we have started the Army Assisted Trials. Mm -hmm. uh, that will now go on uh, through this year. Uh, hopefully, uh, summer trials in Pokhran and uh, winter trials in uh, uh, Doklam or, you know, Sikkim or somewhere. And once that is over, then, uh, uh, you know, it will go for regular uh, tests by the Army. Now, if fighter jets like the F-21 of the F-A-18 Super Hornet get made in India, or if aircraft manufacturers like Boeing or Airbus fully realize their potential here, it could mean good news for precision manufacturers who aid these aircrafts in manufacturing equipment that would go on to help these aircrafts do business here in India. One of these players is Acres Aerospace, who feels the potential as far as precision manufacturing is concerned is simply endless. Also some big announcements from you know uh, major aircraft majors in the civil and commercial side as well. In fact, Airbus talking about delivering one aircraft per week. Boeing also talks, spoken about how SpiceJet to Jet to other you know uh, you know carriers much like Vistara also have an order book that will go on for the later part of the year. I plan to understand now what part of this market and potential are you hoping to capture even as you pace your way to your target. If you really look at it, the currently the commercial aerospace OEMs, Airbus and Boeing, who are majors have a, a significant order book which lasts over 10 years and we are actually basically uh, uh, you know following that order book in a sense it for, it comes directly to us because we are on every program out there and that basically translates to order book for us directly and uh, since we are a direct supplier to the OEMs and the, uh, aircraft OEMs and systems OEMs and we really get benefited from this order book right. and a lot of order book is coming out of India also. With that we're almost out of time on the show but before we go we're going to introduce you to Airbus's new big bird. The A330neo made its India debut at Aero India 2019 and is the company's version of long-range, fuel-efficient, wide-body aircraft. Sit back, enjoy these visuals and thanks so much for watching. Today we're standing by the new big bird from the Airbus stable. Say hello to the A330neo. While India got its first glimpse of the A330neo at Aero India 2019, the aircraft already services 17 carriers from across the world, with Emirates being the latest. The biggest draw of the A330neo is its Rolls-Royce engine, which is the latest one on the market. Now, the engine itself boasts of 25% more fuel efficiency and a greater bypass ratio which reduces fuel consumption to a significant extent. capacity of 440 but more importantly the A330-900 has a maximum range of 7200 nautical miles that's pretty much Delhi to New York in one shot so what are you waiting for hop on and bon voyage